All right, y'all. Well, happy holidays. Um, as you can see, I am back with um, part three of this um, attempted repair of this Tektronix uh, 2230 oscilloscope. And, um, well, as you can see, the we've got a different readout on the display. Check that out. No more squares um it yeah it says power up failures press menu keys to continue cd i don't know what that stuff means but got the squares to disappear isn't this is incredible um because where we left off we had worked on the uh in part two i'd been working on the analog uh circuitry the reason for that being is because I couldn't get those squares to disappear. It was frozen on the screen when I that was the initial fault if you watch part 2 when I when I, when I first unboxed this thing and powered it up these uh almost looked like crosshairs. It looked like some sort of calibration um test mode that got stuck. None of the buttons would respond. The only buttons that would work would or would work normally was were the um the readout intensity, uh, the focus knob, and um, beam find, and uh, horizontal positioning. You could move the, the crosshairs back and forth, but that was it. None of the digital keys, and the pressing the menu, the memory keys, any of the acquisition buttons, nothing would make these squares go away. So I decided to isolate the um, uh, analog circuitry from the digital and start working on that and so that was part two um but now i i need some um, parts to come in to continue working on the analog so for example where we left off um needed the attenuators they got removed um so uh those should be coming in uh, both 10x and the 100x should probably have those in by um first week of the new year um so while i was waiting for that decided to take a look at the digital side again and see what I could get see if I could find this fault and man I was really struggling um you know I started with isolating the kernel um which is provided in you know procedure in the service manual you just remove a few of these jumper um see these black boxes um let me see if I can get a pencil um or a pen sorry about that but yeah, so you see these um, jumpers here. Uh, let me turn on the light as well. Sorry. I'm all over the place. I'm just so... Ex uh, I don't know how much that helps actually. But anyway. Um, yeah, you see these little squares. Like that. So these are little jumpers. That you can move over to another position. And it'll change the... Con the... the, the uh, the uh, configuration of the of the digital side. So, for example, that one right there, that'll reset the unit. That'll perform a hard reset. But basically, to isolate the kernel, you're removing. Um, I think this is uh, in this. I forget which ones they are, but this is in no correct order. C, B, and D. That could be wrong. And then you so you you move those over one. And then you remove, I do know that this is A, so it's 9105A, and then 91B, C, and D. Again, that may, those may not be right, but those are definitely, I'm not sure of the orders what I'm saying. So anyway, and then you remove 9105A. That isolates the kernel. So it's checking the microprocessor, and then you can, you can check the timing of the kernel by um, probing um, these two uh, logic ICs, uh, U9112 and U9114, uh, and the service manager provides waveforms, so I, I was checking those. I was getting some discrepancies that might almost look like a potential, um, maybe an issue with the service manual, I don't know, but for the most part, I was getting what the correct... Um, I was seeing the correct uh, uh, waveforms for those. Um, and in fact, because some of the the resolution of the copies that I found online, even the Artec manual, which is known for having good resolution, the waveforms, some of them I just can't make out. So I also ordered a hard copy of the service manual as well. 
uh, which should also be in soon. But anyway, so I was checking that. I was going through all of the waveforms on the storage board. I, I, everything. I, and I was finding some issues, and you know, but it was hard to make out any sense of it. Uh, I reached out to the EV blog and text uh, scopes group forums. Um, and uh, people were great at providing some suggestions, but didn't get too much feedback there. Um, yeah, so I was really um, banging my head against the wall. and so, But someone did, on the EEV blog, mention what those squares are. And so they are actually for calibrating the vector generator. Um, there are some, um, I believe, some... Um, trimmer pots on the the vector generator board, which that's the i the in out board, and then the vector generator board is is underneath. But yeah, so I was even checking this board, checking the waveforms there, couldn't find anything wrong. Um, but yeah, um, I even ordered some uh, uh, uh new ROM chips. Um, oh man, I accidentally broke the uh, pin off of this ROM, uh, trying to remove it. It was really jammed in there, but I soldered on a little pin. There was just a little uh, blunt part of the leg left. Anyway, that, that was a mistake on my end, but it's it's working for now. Uh, but anyway, I, I ordered a set of ROM chips, just in case it was an issue with the, the ROM. Um, but... Yeah, so but so yeah, that the squares are the vector generator a calibration window, um, which you can access via the menu keys. Why it was stuck there, I have no idea, but I did find a clue. Um, so I was really trying to search for any any if someone had seen this fault before, and I wasn't having much luck, and then finally. There was a thread on the EEV blog. Coincidentally, also somebody named Frank. So, I guess, if your name is Frank and you own this scope, the 2230, be on the lookout for this fault. It seems that it doesn't, li it seems to appear with uh, people named Frank. But anyway, um, this poor sap like myself, he had the same screen I did. Um, and, uh, wasn't, he couldn't do anything to remove it just like, just like what I have here. Um, there was only one response to his thread back in 2014. And someone said, you can trigger that thread. I mean, that, um, that window, that fault. If you press in one of the memory keys while the unit powers up. And so I thought that was interesting. So I started looking at these buttons. I had already cleaned them with a crap ton of contact cleaner. I hate these buttons, as I mentioned um, in uh, the first video. They're notorious for causing all sorts of weird complex faults. And sure enough, I was buzzing them out with my multimeter. And I forget which one it is right now. I will flip it over, but one of them is busted. Okay, so normal switch, normal one of these switches, with it not pressed, these two pins, these two pins are um, closed circuit. There's a short. Once you depress the switch, it's the back two. Okay, again, I think it's this guy right here, I believe, yes, I believe it's this guy, it was open, and then when you depress it, open, so it, it effectively was acting like a depressed switch, at least to probably the, the digital circuitry, and so... I, I'll show you guys in a sec what I did, but I just, um, lifted the board up and soldered a jumper between these two pins, 
powered it back on, and this is what happened. So it was this friggin' switch! These damn gang switches! I had said in the first video how much I hate these switches, and sure enough, after all of that troubleshooting, thinking it was a complex, it had to be some sort of weird complex fault, some weird floating bit or something strange, something wrong with the 80, it was just this fucking switch, excuse my language. Unbelievable. Wow. So, <laughs> I can't believe that. Yep. So it was just a switch. Now, I haven't even moved on. I'm almost scared to press the menu key to continue. I gotta look up what that fault is, but um, yeah. Why don't we? Uh, let me just uh, take a take a second, uh, and we'll kind of continue. We'll see what happens next. Um, if we press the menu, it says press the menu keys to continue. All right, so I got the tripod out, so we can maybe take a look at the screen. So I'm not shaking the camera all over, but yeah, let's press the menu key and see what happens. Okay, nothing happens. I press the menu key. Oh, maybe that's what it meant. Wow. Wow. Uh, I, I don't even know how to toggle through. Um, oh my god. This is incredible. I don't even know. I don't even know how to toggle through. I wasn't. Oh, I see. Okay. It looks like. Uh, no, maybe. Oh, so. Uh, yeah, so I am going to need to fix that switch because one of them. Look at this. Look at this. Holy crap. I can't believe this. It actually works. It's working. Restores menu default. Curse select. Gee, I don't believe this. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look at it. There's the readout. Look at that. Ah. Oh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> this is incredible. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just so ecstatic. I didn't think I would get this far. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just... It's a little bit off the screen. I don't know if that's... Maybe something that can be adjusted in the... Uh, uh, in the... Uh, Yeah. Unbelievable. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just so ecstatic right now. Now, we aren't getting any store, non-store. Oh my god. Unbelievable. Yep. Now we aren't getting any trace. Um, oh, that's because I think I'm in the repetitive store. Yeah, I think that's why. Uh, yeah, let me put the because um, another thing that I was doing before I discovered all of this, I was looking at the front panel. I literally desoldered it. There's like 40 pins that it connects it to the main board, and I took the whole thing out 
just wanted to clean all the switching even though the digital switching is um is connected to the storage board on top i still just wanted to i just wanted to do that now while i was kind of at a i was hitting a wall so i just was like let me just take this board out let's just take a look at everything on there and so that's why all the knobs are removed but anyway yeah let me put that switch back on so i can adjust it and uh yeah we'll see if we can get the make they are the inputs are disconnected again for the same reason um so i'm not going to put um i'm not going to put a a um uh, a probe on there just yet and again the attenuators aren't i still don't have those yet so we're not going to be able to do much troubleshooting on that end but um but yeah I just want to see if we just make sure everything is looking good as far as because I disconnected a whole bunch of, of a lot of connectors. I just want to make sure everything was put back together properly. So just give me one sec. Just figured I'd show you guys the uh, the repair before I uh, connect the inputs back to the attenuator board. But um, yeah, so uh, that's it right there. See these jumpers? Okay, so this is the switch. Um, it's switch number two. One of the two of the memory switches. Also is the up to, uh, key. To one, I guess one moving through the menu. Uh, but yeah, that's it. And uh, these are um, <clears throat> DPDT switches. So uh, double pull, double throw. So they have two independent um inputs and um they're basically on on switches so when the switch is uh not depressed you have this guy the switch is closed for for these two ter terminals and then when the switch is depressed it's closed for these okay so it was open these were open when the switch wasn't depressed and also open for these when the switch was depressed so this switch is completely busted um and so uh and it that makes perfect sense then why this guy was exhibiting that fault based on that comment in the ev block thread which is just incredible to me i still you know can't believe that um but yeah so these are actually these gang switches. They come as a as a bank. You know, I'm not sure if uh, I can just replace one of them or I have to replace the whole bank. They still make this style switch, so I might be able to find a suitable replacement, but we'll see. But it will need to be replaced just because it's it's needed to, you know, access the menu, which is needed for all sorts of things. So that's that. Um, and then another thing, along with other weird alterations made by the previous owner um, on the storage board when I was checking through the troubleshooting um, and waveform uh, verification I found another component that was missed that was cut out so I don't know if this became like a parts unit just for whatever but this capacitor C4203 it clearly looked like it had been cut out. Um, now I just soldered one in temporarily, kind of haphazardly. Uh, I don't know how... Ne it's not... It's a part of the clock... Um, uh, the delay clock timer. Um, and it's actually in parallel with that... Um, uh, trimmer cap, C4202. Um... I don't know, this might just be potentially cut out post um, um, fabrication, maybe? It may not have been the previous owner, I don't know. But it is marked as a as a 22 picofarad capacitor uh, in the service manual. So, uh, yeah, I will solder in that cap correctly once I'm done with everything. But that was just another thing. Um, so, yeah, why don't we... I'm going to um, resolder, like I said, I'm going to reconnect the inputs and then see if we can get a trace on the screen. Well, guys, there you have it. 
we're uh, probing the, uh, I, I um, reconnected the inputs uh, to the attenuator board, um, and uh, yeah, probing the probe adjust uh, square wave, and there you go. Whereas a 10x probe, and we're at uh, 5 volt, uh, 0.5 volts per division, and that's it. The uh, probe adjust is roughly 0.5 volts uh, peak to peak. So there you have it. Um, yeah, it's just I I'm still kind of I'm so ecstatic. I mean, the digital this means the digital side of the board is it's pretty much fixed. Um, you know, with the exception of that s switch or switch bank needing to be replaced. That's it for the digital board. I mean, you know, once maybe we'll, maybe there will be some other bugs once we go uh, get the, you know, I, I still need, I, I have to wait for the attenuators to come in before I can even consider, you know, maybe doing some performance checks, calibration procedures. Um, so that those still need to come in. But, um, yeah, I'm willing to bet that that's really all that that this guy needs is, is just that that switch, just crazy. Um, so yeah, um, part four will be once I get the attenuators in, um, and you know doing some more troubleshooting, potentially if you know if everything looks good, performance checks. Um, but um, yeah, uh, I, this is. <laughs> really making some really great progress on this thing considering the state it was in that you know you guys have seen how bad it is um this is just great um and would have been the last place thing i would have guessed is it being one of those switches despite you know i you know it's i just wouldn't have guessed one being completely bad i mean because i cleaned all of those thoroughly they're very accessible you know, the backs are um, open, uh, so you can easily penetrate the switch with contact cleaner. It's not like some of these gang switches, they are sealed up pretty well, and you sometimes you just have to even drill a small hole in them to get the uh, contact cleaner in there to thoroughly clean them, but not these. So for the fact that it's just completely broke, it's just, I was that I was not expecting. But, um, man... Always check the gang switches. That's if this is this is a, a lesson. Um, if you guys ever need one, take it from this experience here. But that's it. Again, hope you guys had a nice holiday, and uh, I'll catch you next time. All right.